Hi, Heather. Hey, Heather. Can you see me? <laughs> yes. yes. I can. Okay, okay. And I can hear you. Great. Look how gorgeous she is. Come on, Aww. you guys. <laughs> okay, well, welcome, Heather, to our group. Hi. Hi. Good to see you all. We were just all chatting away while, while you were getting your audio and video hooked up. Yeah, I think I got it. I think we're here now. So, well, I am so glad you are guest number two on the yeah. series that I'm doing. I'm thrilled to have you. Absolutely. I love y'all. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, we've seen each other before, but I think just huh? at NAM shows, right? I know it's NAM time just about. I was just I'm on the sure. website last night, you know, clicking all my favorite brands and getting involved, of course. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm uh, the company, the drum company that I'm with, they... They called and asked me if I would make a video so that I, they could put it up for their, the Great. Name. So Aww. I guess I'm going to be working on that this weekend. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so somehow I'm going to be putting that together. But I'm really glad that you guys are here. Um, Wendy is new. Uh, she, this is her Welcome. first Zoom. And I think, Heather, I think you're, this is new for you. You have never been to one of our Zooms, correct? That's true. Yep. And somebody's. Hey, Hazel. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, I think I'm I'm joining in on another. Just yeah, I was going to say there's another Heather Thomas trying to. Do you want me to? You want me to uh, admit that one as well? Yeah, that was. I was thinking if I wanted to add anything to the chat, it would be easier to type it on my laptop. Yeah, very good. We got. But that. I won't. I won't do video on that one. I'll just. I'll, I'll keep the audio off and I'll. No worries. We we're covered. Okay, so um, there's a lot. We're there's a lot going on for today. So today we're going to be doing the drawing. Oh. Um, for. Because this month we did a um, a little contest which allowed people two weeks to invite people to join our group. And every time somebody actually went onto our group page, clicked join, and answered our questions, that person got um, that person got a um, uh, an entry into the uh, contest. Heather, I think you had two people that joined. Good. So your name is in here twice for some swag. And what they're going to win is. Any color of cap that I have beanie, it's a fleece line beanie, uh, any of my t-shirts, I just pulled one out, um, and then a cinch bag, any color of my cinch bags. So whoever wins is going to get the whole shebang, and I'll send it out today after we're done. So we'll be drawing for that in just a bit. Okie dokie. I think everybody's on that's going to be on. If somebody joins us late, that's fine. I'll just let them in. But let's just get started with you heather yeah okay um so i want everybody to kind of know a little bit about you uh, some people I, I keep hearing i get i get pms and they're like oh my gosh i'm gonna have to be there for heather thomas i've got such a girl crush on her oh so, that's so amazing yeah they they love you they all love you um and so i want people that haven't watched your career blossom like i have let them know a little bit about who you are and kind of who you play for, what you're doing, those kinds of things. Just give them a little synopsis of Heather Tom. Totally. Yeah, um, so I've been playing drums since I was a kid. I started in fifth grade band. I'm a lifer, as I like to say. Um, and I ended up, you know, all, all through school, I was taking lessons and playing in the bands and everything. And then I went to college and I got a degree in percussion performance at Central Washington University. And then I moved to Seattle. I, I was local to Seattle, so that's where I'm based out of. And um, yeah, I just started joining bands and playing around the scene a lot. I've been in a ton of bands. I'm very active in Seattle. Um, and then I picked up a gig with Mary Lambert, who a lot of you might remember from that Macklemore song, Same Love, the I can't change even if I try. Oh, yeah. My love, my love, my love. She keeps me warm. Like, remember when she married a bunch of people at the Grammys? So that's Mary. Uh, so I'm in her band. So I got to do a lot of touring with her on a national level. Uh, we were nice. opening for Gavin DeGraw and Matt Nathanson. And we played on like Good Morning America a couple of times or VH1 live. So some, you know, real fun. Like she was signed to Capitol Records. So I got to do the whole pop star thing for a minute. Um, <laughs> and I still play with her, of course. Obviously, there's no shows this year. Um, right. We had shows on the books when when the pandemic shut everything down. Um, but yeah, so other than that, I've got my own band, the Heather Thomas Band. I'm a singer songwriter. I've got an album and the EP out under my name and music videos and all that. And uh, I also have some Drumeo instructional videos. I got to do some sessions with them. Oh, there's Delise. What's up, dude? Um, hey, buddy. 
<laughs> hey, um, so yeah, I get to uh, I got to do drumio lessons. So I'm a teacher as well. I've been teaching since I was in high school, um, which is something I'm, I'm excited that now I'm back in Seattle and I have like a steady schedule and Wi-Fi connection. I can take a lot more students on than I was able yeah. to last year. Um, but because what I did last year was I went and traveled the whole country. Um, my initial goal was to spend each month living in a different city for all of 2020. Um, and so I pretty much did that. I left it on January 1st. I left on like New Year's Day and I drove down to LA and spent January there. And then I went up to the Bay Area for February. I was in Austin for March. And then the pandemic shut everything down and slowed it down. But I decided to, to keep moving. It like slowed me down by like a month. I lost maybe one month where I had to stay in Austin for an extra time. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I kind of kept going. So I was in a different city every month. Um, it, it changed it obviously I wasn't doing live music as much I was more you know uh, recording and, and stuff but because of that I have an album that I'm working on for this next year I've got maybe like 20 I've got like 20 songs kind of ready to go I'm gonna whittle it down to maybe 12 and I got some music videos that I'm planning and some more instructional content people really love the drumio play along so I want to do more play along type of instructional videos um and you know and, and regular music videos and stuff of course well, how but yeah, that, that's, that's me and that's what I'm up to these days. I, I'm so proud of you. This is so oh, awesome. Thank you. Um, how did your relationship with Drumeo get started? You know, I originally, how did that work? I mean, obviously everyone knows Drumeo. So I've been watching Drumeo for as long as they've been doing amazing videos on YouTube. Right. Um, so I always kind of had it as a goal that I was like, you know what, someday I want to be one of the drummers on Drumeo. I want to be, you know, at a level where that's something that I have uh, available to me. So over the past few years, I, I go, I've been going to NAMM for maybe like four years or so. And mm -hmm. I just kind of steadily made connections with people and continued to follow up year after year. And then by the time that I was introduced to, um, I was introduced to Dave at Dremio by Dave from TRX and Hit Like a Girl. Yeah. So he put yeah. us in contact. And by the time he recommended me, Dave was like, um, oh yeah, well, I already follow you on Instagram. You're awesome. We would love to have you up. So uh, they just said, okay, let's go. And so we went up and filmed a bunch of uh, videos and obviously Dremio is incredible. So it's been nothing yeah. but good to have that partnership with them. That is wonderful. I want you, um, I want you also after this to drop links to yes. your music and some to things like that because I want people to get to listen and to see, you know, what you what you're about. Yeah, let me let me just drop some in the chat as we're going and I'll as, yeah, as they become great. relevant. Um, and I'm recording this so that I'll be able to share it um, to for people that haven't been able to join us live. Yeah. So I'll, I'll post my website. I'll post my my drum lessons booking site. I just started booking lessons with the new um, drumming so or scheduling software, which yeah. I thought would be maybe interesting to bring up because I'm sure there's a lot of drum teachers in the group and a lot of people kind of figuring mm -hmm. their own thing out. Um, a friend of mine showed me it's called Acuity Scheduling, and it's pretty easy. It syncs yeah. with your calendars, and you can link it to your website. Um, so I'll put my link up there so y'all can check that out. Uh, and if anyone wants. I have my my highest discount I've reserved for the drummer girls. So I got a 25% discount. So I'll nice. put the code in there too. Yeah, that's Great. fantastic. And if you ever want to do a quick video on Acuity, um, yeah. just to, to let everybody else know about it, because I think that sounds very familiar. That might be the one that Emmanuel Kaplat uses. Um, oh, yeah, probably. It, it yeah. may be. So, uh, but it would be really nice because we do have a lot of teachers in the group and that might be something that could be really helpful. So if you, if you put something up there, I know that um, it would be helpful to a lot of people. Yeah. There's all kinds of like little tutorial videos I could do. Cause I've, I've got the, the whole drum lessons platform. I've got, you know, like a version of my website that I feel like I could walk people through and help a lot of, a lot of artists that are just beginning, they kind of don't know where to start. And I kind of figured a lot of this out by just doing it over right. time yeah. so I'd love to share that kind of thing or like you know a lot of that artists have a perfect. Patreon and I, I built my own version of Patreon on my site so I could kind of show people how to do that too um yes. yeah there's, there's tons that of stuff I could share. that would be brilliant I would love yeah. that yeah oh, fantastic okay you guys does anybody in the panel here does anybody have a question for Heather I need to talk to me on Demio. Uh, somebody, anybody? Yeah, how do you do this? Do people like raise their hands? I've seen kids doing that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, usually if somebody's talking, um, they they become my full screen. 
And then I mean, also to, to let them know, hey, Sherry, do you have something? I do. Um, so um, okay. Heather, you were talking about the Drumeo play alongs. Yeah. Um, will you describe what those are? Um, Absolutely. I, I haven't really heard about that yet. So um, what I did when I went to Drumeo the first time, I kind of pitched them the idea that um, one of the most popular books throughout the history of drumming, at least in the last hundred years, is um, a book called Stick Control. Mm -hmm. And it's a basic snare drum exercises, mostly simple patterns um, played very repetitively. And so what I did is I just did a play along video with just me and a practice pad. And I, it's in real time, I just take you through the entire full page of exercise. Okay. And it lasts about half an hour. Uh -huh. And so you can do it on your own. And I, that's how I learned to do it. But I felt like if I was able to give people a play along video, it would remove the difficulty of, of the, the concentration it takes to focus for 20 times through an exercise for half right. an hour is just like, it's a, it's a bit of an obstacle. And so I was like, I want to remove one block by just giving people someone to practice with. And so yeah. what's cool about that That's is awesome. that a lot of people have been playing it over and over, like, you know, as their warm up. And so I love that because I, now I get to be part of people's journey and it, it really works. The stick control exercises really do help iron out any technique things or um, get you to kind of focus and concentrate and relax. So it's yeah. great, great exercises. I'll drop a link to the, to the, um, the YouTube video in the comments. Okay. It's fantastic. You. And you know, I was talking to Dom Famulero the other day and he yeah, actually told me that um, he actually told me that he took stick control and he wanted to get uh, better with his double pedal. So he actually did the whole stick control book with his feet. So that there's he, like a, he hundreds of different everything. ways that you can yeah. do it. It's so great. Yeah, yeah, you can, I, sometimes what I'll do is, this is like a little bit nerdy, but like I will do, I'll do stick control where I'll play one line with my hands. And then as my hands move through, my feet will then play the next one. So I just go down and like, I'll be playing different patterns with my feet than with my hands. Nice. There's also ways of doing it I really like where like I'll play the patterns in uh, with between my, my hands and my kick. So maybe I'll, I'll be playing if the pattern is, right, right, left, left, right, right, left, left. I'll turn that into right foot and left hand. So kick, kick, snare, snare, kick, kick, snare, snare. And then you can intersperse that with beats. You can go one and two and three and four and kick, kick, snare, snare, kick, kick, snare, snare, kick, kick, snare, snare, kick, kick. Or maybe, maybe keeping the hi-hat going. But there's a lot of ways to develop in independence with these exercises. I'll, over the course of the time that I'm doing instructional videos, I'm sure I will get more in depth about stick control and the different ways to use it. I was even thinking about doing like a little, um, kind of like not a contest, but a little, campaign where I get people to show me their favorite ways that they practice to yeah. control because every it's been around for so long that there's just hundreds and hundreds of ways that people have developed to use it um so yeah, yeah. And anyways, the, the play along is just the basic exercise all the way through very simple very meditative and relaxing and, and a good a good uh, workout for sure wonderful can I make a comment about this the the stick control play along please hi Heather. how are you Hi, good. Yeah, how are you? Um, so I, I, I love that. And one thing I love about it is I um, have adult ADD for sure. I'm sure I do. And you're talking us through it, and you have exactly what which yeah. which line we're on, and and how. I mean, it keeps track. It keeps track for us of where we yep. are. So that's very helpful. I love it. Yeah. So I, I mean, over years of practicing stick control, I've developed the ability where I can keep track in my head and, and over a two bar phrase, I can count up to 20 times and I can do that for the entire 24 bar exercise. But that took me so long to develop. And it's, and I know that, you know, I I've got like, and maybe an extra layer of patience that has been hammered into me by just years and years of studying drums, but a lot of people are just getting into it. And so I was like, I want to move you through this because the, the quicker you kind of like dive into it, the more you value you'll get out of it from there moving forward. What I'm giving you is the ability to do the exercise forever. You know, I, I love that so many people have taken it and used it and made it part of their practice routine. I feel so lucky to be part of people's life that way. Yes. Hey, I wanted to do what a housekeeping thing. If you are not talking, please put your, uh, your thing on mute. Um, just, just because if there's a background noise or something else, your face becomes the big picture on everybody's screen and, um, and then it, it cuts Heather off. 
even if if it's just picking up a dog behind you or something like that. So I want to make sure everybody hears um, what Heather's having to say and the people that are asking questions. Um, I don't want anything to interrupt. Okay, very good. Um, so anybody else want to ask Heather a question? I have a question. Go so, ahead. Um, I so I just got my drum set in October, so I'm I'm very new. I'm 40, yeah. um, <laughs> so I'm a little older starting out. Um, Beautiful. And my struggle is like, I love your stick con control. Um, well, I actually had to slow it down in the beginning. Like I couldn't actually go at your speed, but now I yeah. can kind of go at your speed. And I'm like, is my left hand ever going to be <laughs> the same as my, I feel like um, my left hand often like the stick kind of talking about control. It's like not under control sometimes. It's kind of, especially when I'm trying to do doubles, like, my left hand just won't do what my right hand does. And it's so yeah. frustrating. I hear that. And you are not alone. And yeah. almost every drummer has this issue, whether they're right-handed or left-handed, it's likely that your non-dominant hand, it's really, really struggles. And it, and you, it's so much where you're like, what is wrong with you? And you'll, you'll talk to your hand, you'll be like, you're so stupid, right? So one of the first things you can do to help your left hand is to literally start being kinder to that side of your body. Um, and instead of being like, it doesn't work and it's slow or stupid or whatever, start to start, start to like talk to it as though uh, it's learning and it's becoming stronger and we're forming connections that didn't exist before. Part of the thing with why it's so difficult to work your left hand is because or your non-dominant hand is because your brain has so many connections to your dominant hand. It has your language center because you write there. It has all your fine motor skills because you use it for most things. Your left hand has the same buildup and muscles but it doesn't have the same neural connections. So with drumming, what we have to do is we get to establish some of those connections in ways that are more balanced. And so in the long run, drummers become more ambidextrous, more comfortable with their non-dominant hand, but there is, it does take time. So the yeah. first thing I would do is, you know, talk to your hand is that just show your hand literal extra love. It's part of your body. It hears everything you say to it. So be kind to it. Um, be patient. Um, and then another thing that I really like to recommend is to do exercises that get both of your hands moving together so that you can really see the differences between the shape that your hands are taking. And let me grab a practice pad actually. We'll do it. We'll do free lessons um, because information is love and love is free. So here we go. I'm going to grab some sticks. Okay. So, um, one thing that I do almost every time that I'm warming up and playing is I just take, I get a practice pad and I try and get both of my sticks just moving together. So I'll start and I'll stand and I prefer to stand as I'm warming up because I really feel like it causes me to, to really keep my whole spine aligned from my, you know, from my head all the way down through my ankles. Um, and then I'll just do this. I like to do it in front of a mirror or in front of a, a video camera if I can, just so I can watch. And I'll like to, I'll think about the tips of my sticks. I think about the curve that they're making. I'll look at my, all the way up through my arms, up to my shoulder, make sure that I'm balanced. Um, and like, no matter how long you play, this always can just be like a, a nice chill way to get started. You can do it a little faster. Um, but the things that I like to think about are like nice balance. It takes some time for you to build those connections. So like be patient and, and don't do things that are too difficult. Uh, if you're, if you're working on technique, if you're working on like relaxing and, and developing, um, a sense of relaxation and ease, do easy things, do things that are like that you physically can watch yourself do and go like, okay, I can see that this is working. Um, so yeah, get hands moving together. I like to sometimes use my right hand to train my left hand. So someone, someone pointed this out to me one time and I found it really helpful. Um, if I asked you to write your name on a whiteboard with your right hand or your dominant hand, you would do it, no problem. If I asked you to do that with your non-dominant hand, you would like have to think about it. You could probably kind of get it, but it would be a little bit sketchy, right? But if I said, take both of your hands, and write your name. You could use your right hand to guide your left hand and it could pretty much do the exact same thing. So that's what I'm also doing here where I'm getting both hands doing the same thing. I'm using my, the hand that feels good to teach the other hand how to, how to like catch up to it. So I don't know if that's any of that uh, applies to what you're, you're 
thought patterns are so far, but those are just some things to maybe open up new pathways to your non-dominant hand. Um, and th to answer your question, yes, there will come a time where your left hand can do pretty much anything that your right hand can do. Uh, you, you can keep at it and there's, there's, uh, there's always, always room for it to get easier and, and more smooth. My, my husband gave me a similar advice and stopped calling my hand stupid. <laughs> yeah, totally. Oh, we have to be so that, that, that was great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's one thing that gets overlooked a lot, I think, is that your practice habits are important, um, but your mental habits are what create your entire reality. And practice is a beautiful time to be able to, like, turn the, that lens in and think and, and, like, really start to become become like at peace with yourself. I think practice is a great way to just like work on the things you actually need to work on. Um, and that applies to both the technical skills, but also the, uh, the thoughts in your head, the patterns that you have, what you bring, what you're thinking about when you're practicing and playing is what you bring to music. So I really try and focus on making my practice feel joyful, feel smooth and, and happy and just like in the pocket because that's the way I want to play with people. So because of that, I'll tend to practice things. If I'm trying to practice something that's difficult, I'll practice it pretty slow. I'll practice it at a tempo where I can do it smoothly and I'll practice it for a long time. I don't sit here and go like, okay, I think I pretty much got it. No, I'll sit in it for another 10 minutes after that and we'll really get relaxed we'll really get smooth with it we'll let our thoughts kind of like turn into to music you know what I mean yeah that's perfect I think it's so important um positive self-talk is so important it in is. all aspects of your life but in music especially because um we we tend to have so much grace and patience with other people and so little with ourselves and i don't think it should be that way i think it should yeah. we should have equal amounts of grace and patience for ourselves especially for learning something new or learning something really challenging um we we should be our own best cheerleaders you know when we're absolutely doing like, like that so yes i agree piggyback on everything that you said i think it's perfect perfectly spoken Okay, yeah. um, right now would be a great time to do our drawing. What do you guys think? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, thank you to the people that did participate. We, uh, we had a bunch of new members this week, not only from you guys um, uh, inviting people the last couple of weeks, but also I went on to a couple of drummers groups and I asked permission to put a post up about uh, inviting any female drummers that wanted to join us. And I got hit with at least 40 in the last two days people joined our group because they didn't know about it and now they do and one of the groups drummers community actually pinned it to the top of their group so everybody can see it when they first go onto their group which is a really cool thing for them to do so i'm going to um here's all of the people that um, had at least one member that they invited join i'm going to pull a name and that person gets the swag so here's the name let's see what we got Lisa Bowen. So I am going to contact Lisa Bowen after this. Uh, we'll send her her swag. So congratulations, Lisa. And we'll make sure that that goes out for you today as soon as I know exactly what you want. So congratulations. We're going to have a different contest every month. I love giving away swag. So um, and now I'm starting to get my companies involved and they're going to be starting to send me some things that I can send to you guys as well, which I'm excited about. So, okay, so um, Heather, is there anything that's exciting for you that's coming up uh, in the near future? You know, I'm sure that there's some exciting things that haven't been uncovered yet because I just got back like a month ago and I've been kind of like making my way back into town. But the things that I'm doing that I'm excited about are uh, preparing my next album. So yeah. I'm, I'm getting ready to go into the studio, working up with a, a group of songs. Um, so I'm excited for that. I'm excited for uh, the videos that are going to come from that. I'm excited for my, I have all these um, like play along videos. I'm, I'm working with the Seattle drum school to, um, to bring like their, their curriculum to the YouTube play along format. Um, yeah. So I think from me, expect a lot more of those play along videos in the future. I don't know how quickly I'll be able to get them out because I'm not necessarily a video editor. Um, yeah. But those are, that's my plan is to, to do a lot more of that, to have that available to people. Um, yeah, so those are, those are some things that I'm excited about. So what kind of music do you really enjoy playing? Ooh, okay. So in a band, I love to play like funk music, anything that's got like a nice solid backbeat. I love to play things that are swung. 
um you know I just love like a triplet feel so yeah. something I can just lay back on and just like have a good time that's that's yeah. what I love to do I'm with you right there that's yeah awesome. in Seattle there's a really cool funk scene there's a bunch of really awesome funk bands like there's an organ trio called McTuff that we really love. There's Funky to Death and Marmalade and um, the the True Loves, the Delve on the Mar organ trio. There's tons of really cool funk bands in Seattle. So I love that scene. I love playing that kind of music. And when I was a kid, my drum teacher gave me a Tower of Power CD. And that was my oh, first yeah. like, CD that I learned as a drummer where I was like, yes. I, did, I, I wasn't like playing along to it at the beginning, but I but that influenced me a lot. Of course. Yeah. Fantastic. You yeah, guys Dave Garibaldi is a hero. <laughs> Man, isn't that the best? Well, did you get to see their concert last year at the NAMM show? They were outside? Yeah, I saw them last year. I've seen them at Jazz Alley once before, too. And I always, it's funny to me, uh, my story is that I, was, I saw Dave Garibaldi at Jazz Alley. And then afterwards, uh, I just wanted to talk to him. And he was like, hey, why don't I, let me buy you a glass of wine. So we sat and talked for like half an hour. He bought me a glass of wine. And we just okay. got to like be drummers at the bar together it was really cool that is fantastic I love yeah. that yeah, yeah especially because yeah, him being the first drummer that I that I was listening to when I was taking lessons was really it was a really cool experience yeah that's how I feel about Danny Serafin from Chicago oh, the cool. first one that I was listening to and um, I'm friends with his his um, I guess now it's ex-wife Pam um, but I I got to be in a magazine she put out last year it was in her um, first edition um, she had a contest with called a hidden hero in the drummer world I guess it's hidden hero and that she picked three people um internationally I was one of the people and then she brought me a copy at the NAMM show last year and signed it and then um introduced me to Danny and that was really fun that I finally got to meet him because I had been playing he was the reason kind of I got into listening really to the drums when I was listening to music just totally. the way he played in those you know those early uh, Chicago albums so so influential for me so I get it. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, okay. So it, who else has some questions for our Heather? Anyone else? I can chime in on something cool. Um, it was, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. What's up, All right. Great. Am I me? This is my first actual Zoom call. So bear with me. I know. Yeah. So Delise, <laughs> Delise and I know each other from, from Seattle. We were roommates right before I left. And so like super close, we've been taking lessons together. Like Delise is amazing. And so it's, I was like, Hey, you got to get on this Zoom call. So yeah, she actually downloaded have... Zoom just for this. <laughs> yeah, I really did. I'm super excited to be here. And last night it was really fun to geek out with all you ladies and just talk. So I think something that came up um, actually this morning, somebody was talking about pain, like drum pain. Mm. And I know yeah. that you introduced me to uh, that awesome book, The Anatomy of a Drummer. Oh gosh, yeah. And I know we're all from different age groups and stuff. And a lot of us are a little older and getting into this a little late, which is awesome. But it's like, I think maybe touch on that a little bit. I would love to. I'll put a link to that in the chat because that cool. book changed my life. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> yeah. So the book that Delise is talking about, and Delise is a great drummer. You can check her out too. She's, she entered the Hit Like a Girl contest a couple of years ago. So she's got some videos up too. Um, but so what she's talking about is a book called Anatomy of Drumming. And it's written by a guy named John Lamb who lives down in Portland. And the book just, it, it's just an anatomy book that talks about how all of that applies to drumming. And so, and it's, it's pretty thorough and well-written and has exercises that help you as the drummer connect with your body and your alignment and your, your muscle structure and your joints. Um, and, and there's just like some nuggets of information in there that like blew my mind. Your, your body works pretty much the way that you understand it to. And so when, when your understanding changes, your body responds to that pretty, pretty readily. Correct. Um, yeah. So, so, so some things that I learned here, I'll, I'll just give you some, some of the little mind blowers that changed my life. Um, I learned that you, your wrists themselves, the bone structure in your wrist, it doesn't rotate. So your wrist has available to it this motion, the up and down, right? And you have a little bit of side to side. You have like 80 degrees out and maybe like 20 degrees in. But any rotation that happens from your hands is actually the result of the two bones in your arm crossing over one another. So like they, when, you're, when your arm is out like this, 
they're like parallel. And then when you cross them over, that's how you turn your hand over. So what that means, what was revolutionary to me is that any rotation of your wrist can be, can be or of your hands can be fully relaxed in the wrist because your wrist is actually not even participating in that movement. It starts all the way down here at your elbow and is a result of like your, your forearm muscles. And so a lot of drummers will injure themselves in the wrist because they don't understand the alignment of, of the wrist structure itself. And so once you start to learn those things, uh, you can kind of get out of your own way. You can, you can like move a little bit freer um, so, so that book, I totally recommend it. I put a link in the chat. Um, I actually met the, the author of the book at NAM one time and it was kind of one of those funny experiences. It was like, I don't know if y'all have ever been to NAM. it's a little overwhelming. It can be so busy and energetic. And, and I remember having a time where I was kind of feeling like a little burnt out. And I remember sitting down outside being like, ah, what, what am I here to do? What do I really, what am I really trying to accomplish? And then this guy came and sat down next to me. He's like, do you mind if I sit here? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I asked him, I was like, what, what are you here for? What are you doing? And he goes, oh, I'm promoting my book. And he pulls out the anatomy of drumming. And I was like, oh, wow. you wrote that book? That book changed my life. And I just like talked to you off about how excited I was about wow. that book. And I was like, it, ta- it changed the way I understand my body. It changed the way I sit and play. It changed the way I teach. Um, and so I always, I always recommend it to people because it's, it's just so great. Um, and I use the information that I learned in that book in my lessons all the time. It, I, it gives me so much more to work with. I can, now I have tools when I can see that a drummer is like slouching over, I know how to communicate to them in a way that will get them to connect with the fact that their, their skull is balanced on the top of their spine, which is lined up with the rest all the way down to your hips. If you're sitting all the way down to your ankles, if you're standing simple, little things like that help help so much to just remove pain and tension. A lot of the pain and and tension we experience is either from holding, holding um, tension in our body where we don't need to, and thus like overworking our muscles um, or just simple alignment issues that, uh, that can be adjusted. Um, So I totally recommend that, especially if you're experiencing any pain, especially if you have any t- type of condition that makes you more susceptible to injury, um, the anatomy of drumming is totally great. Fantastic. I'll have to get a copy because that sounds very, very interesting. I put a link in the bio. Also, okay, I want to make a quick uh, note. I just learned something and maybe this can help some of y'all out too. I just learned about a thing um, that I've been using lately when I send people <laughs> links and recommendations. Um, maybe y'all have heard of this. I had just heard of it. Uh, I became a, an affiliate link like a an amazon affiliate so that when i send you a link um i like get a commission because i'm recommending books and things so any link you see me posting uh anyone who clicks that link i automatically get like a a commission on that sale so that's something that i think maybe more artists could start doing because a lot of us are just sharing all this information and they're so just tapping into different revenue streams that already exist like we already are buying gear and books and things um, so yeah, if you see me post a link, please click it and send that one to your friends. If they click it, I, I get to like put that little notch in my bank account and it goes, Hey, independent artists can pay rent this month. There you, you know go. what I'm saying? That's right. Fantastic. I didn't know about that. So yeah, you're going to have to let Yeah, me I just learned about it. That's another thing that I would love to tell, you know, talk to more people about because it, and I, like, I just started doing it so far. I've made $3 and 74 cents, but Woo-hoo. that's not nothing, you know, <laughs> that's not nothing. <laughs> That's lovely. Now, so how do you become a person that gets to do that? Do you have to sign up? If you or- look up, yeah, most corporations have have it. You could do it with like eBay or you could do it with Guitar Center or Walmart or Target. Um, and you just look up if they have an affiliate program. Okay. So you, go to, you could go to Guitar Center Affiliate and then click that link and then you sign up and there's like a limit like where you have to, you have to make a sale within a certain amount of time. Otherwise it you don't like become a member or something. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty easy. And uh, what I realized was that there was a way to do it that was really natural. It was like stuff I was already doing. I'm already recommending these things. I'm yeah, already right, interested in people getting their first pair of drumsticks, their first practice pad, their first drum set. So I was like, yeah. there's a way that we can just make this, um, you know, so that it, that it keeps us helping each other out. I love that. Very yeah. good. Such good information today, Heather. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you guys have anything else before uh, before we end? I, I did get to say hi to everybody. I know. Hi, Dorothea. Hi, everyone. hi, Dorothea. We saw you on Drew Barrymore this week. How was that? Well, it was uh, it was fun, but it was 
quick and it was just like a little little segment but it was still fun being able to to do it and be on national tv <laughs> that's so cool it was I awesome love, i love that i love that the guy right away went to tuba yeah <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> oh <my. laughs> that was really funny um I have hi, a question. Danny. Oh. Danny is joining us from where again I'm from Vienna, Austria, Europe. Austria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about 11 p.m. here. Well, thank you for joining us. <laughs> so the end of the day. Uh, yes, as I'm already speaking, uh, I have uh, not really a question, but I saw your video on seven uh, steps to the perfect fill or something yeah. like that. And there is also another uh, video, uh, the fill... Um, you hear uh, you yeah, writing something the like that, film. but you can only watch it uh, when you're a Dramio member, and I'm not yet. <laughs> yeah, so there's a few there's a few videos that are exclusive to Dramio Edge members, um, and the nice thing about that is that if you just want to try it out, you can get a Dramio Edge like seven day trial. So if you're like, I just want to snag these videos real quick, you, there's a way that you can do that. Um, or or just become an Edge member. It's really cool. The videos basically. You know how Drumio has all these these you know drummers doing like a single video lesson. If you get in a Drumio Edge, they have whole courses. So instead of taking you know twenty minutes to explain a topic, we split it up. And so the 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 course you're talking about in Drumio Edge is called um, writing the fills you hear in your head. And it's a really really cool approach to removing like the technical rudimental stuff from from uh playing drum fills and turning it more into like what shapes and rhythms are you actually hearing tapping into your own musical sense your own kind of musical voice and um you'll get to a point with it where you anything you can imagine you can figure out how to play it in the moment um so i i take you through like a seven step course that starts with like um, you know, I, you know, just being able to sing rhythms out loud, then being able to match those rhythms to the sounds you're hearing, then being able to play those rhythms or orchestrate them around the kit. And it just walks you through it. And it's a great lesson. I wish that that one was public because I think that's probably one of my better, um, lessons. Um, but the, you know, the other thing is I can, I can redo a lot of these on my own too. It's not Drumio doesn't own my ideas either. They're down for me to put this kind of stuff on my channel too. So I'll probably go into that and, uh, and do my own version of it someday and, and bring people in. Cause it is, it is an interesting method. I haven't heard anyone else doing it that way. And pe when people start to do it, it really connects. You're like, Oh, I can just play what I'm imagining in my head. I can actually just make it happen. That would be awesome. And any videos that you want to do on the drummer girls United, we would love, love for you to have those. Yeah. What I want to do upcoming is I want to start producing video content with partnerships. Like personally by myself, I can get my little camera out and, and show you real quick, but I would love to do a whole series of videos and partner with, you know, uh, the Seattle drum school or Drumio and like Bosphorus or Remo or Vader, or, you know, one of, one of those brands that really loves to bring educational content to people. I would love to do some bigger partnerships and go like, Hey, we can all work together to bring this information to a you yeah. know because the drumming community is so connected and we all love drumming so we much. all love when there's new videos out so it's like you know there's there's really ways to do it so that we can all just kind of keep it rolling yes absolutely yeah. that's awesome yeah um maya is that how you say your name yep yeah oh um, yeah. this is your first uh zoom with us yes it is though i've been a well, member for a bit <laughs> well welcome i'm glad that you're here Thank oh, you I have any, you got syncopation on this on the I can tell you're practicing you got syncopation on the oh yeah I've been, I've been playing drums since I was really little so um yeah I'm hoping to do it um professionally <laughs> so great and what are your goals there what do you want to do um well my well my grandmother was a professional and drummer actually I never met her but uh, my family's from Hungary originally and she was actually a drummer in the 1940s wow um, so um, yeah, and then I had a lot of relatives who were musicians on my mom's side of the family. So it kind of started really young since I was like two years old. I was starting to kind of like hit things. And then I played piano for a really long time. Um, and then I started playing drums around age 10. So, yep. Fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. Well, I'd love 
I'm so glad that you're here and part of our group. Yeah, yeah I, and also I felt to at home. You, that's amazing. If if any of you have any questions about if you want to become if you want to make music more your like professional pursuit and you want to like become a full time artist, it's like the weirdest time in the world to be considering that right now. But mm -hmm. we got it. You can think short term and long term. You can go like, okay, I I might not be able to play gigs right now, but I'm gonna play drums for the rest of my life. So. That being said, you can start to kind of plan ahead and go like, okay, well, what do I really want to do and start working towards those goals? So if any of you all want help with that kind of thing, if you just want to like help focus maybe your vision or your intention or your goals or just work on certain concepts or stuff, um, feel free to book a consultation or a lesson with me. Like I love helping people figure that kind of thing out because I know for me, having other people who had done it before me, helped me out was so integral to my ability to just feel confident in, in forging a path for myself. Yeah. So okay. yeah, any, anyone, any questions, you can always just like message me within or without of the group or Instagram or whatever. Oh, also if you're on Instagram, I'm Heather on drums. Um, follow me if you haven't, but yeah, hit me up anytime. If y'all want help with that kind of stuff. Cause I love to help people plan out their, their goals and visions and careers. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, is that, um, does anybody else have anything before we say goodbye? You guys have been awesome. And uh, the questions have, oh, hi, Sherry, you have a question? Uh, yeah, I just unmuted myself. Um, so Heather, um, would it be, could we go back to what you were talking about with the anatomy, um, the, um, the, the anatomy of the drummer? I just have a um, question about, I'm having a lot of low back pain. Um, and even sometimes like pain shooting down my left leg, which I, I think it has something to do with my balance mm -hmm. and always having to hold hold the um, hi-hat down. So do you have yeah. any like tips? I do, I do. I, I love to help people with things like the, the pain that, that comes along with, uh, with your balance. So let me see if I can find a, an easy way to do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move my camera over to my kit really quick so you can kind of see. Um, let me unplug this um, Yeah, I totally, I totally do have some advice for that. This is something that a lot of drummers struggle with. And I think, um, especially as women, we, the area, uh, like our hip flexors and um, lower backs, there, there's so many more ways that that gets complicated for women, I think. Um, so it's really, really valuable to, to address this kind of thing. So I'm glad that you asked. Thank um, you. So, okay, here, here's what I like to do. And I'll try and position this so that you can see me. This is my bedroom, by the way. I got drums in my bedroom, of course. <laughs> nice. Okay, so <laughs> when it comes to, to seating posture, um, I like to think when it, we, we talked about like points of balance a little bit, you've got like your, your skull on top of your sh like shoulder area, and then you've got your lumbar spine and then your hips and then your knees and then your ankles. So when you're standing, your knees and ankles are stacked. When you're sitting, your sit bones, your hips, like that, right at the bottom of it, where the little two little bones sit. Um, there's you want to be able to balance that back and forth. You want to make sure you're not leaning to one side or the other. I, I catch myself leaning a lot to either my bass mm -hmm. drum side or my hi hat side. So mm -hmm. that's something to check in with. Um, but just remembering that 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 your hips are kind of your lowest point in terms of their straight up and down alignment. So one thing I'll do is I'll, I'll sit and I'll check in with like, okay, are my hips tilted down and back? Are they tilted forward or am I pretty well balanced? So start with that balance. Um, and then, the, then I think what the most valuable thing to think about is the alignment from where your hips naturally and relaxed point straight out, you know, like just if you were sitting comfortably with your just your sitting on the chair, Whatever angle your, your legs go out at, your knees and then ankles from there want to stay in a straight line. So a lot of times you'll find if your ankles are turned or if your knees are popped you know, sideways or in air out, you'll, you'll experience this pain of, of things being out of alignment. And your body will tell you after 10 or 20 minutes where there's pain, right? So pay close attention to that because pain most of the time if it's re resulting from emotion can be, can be dealt with. Um, so yeah, I would, that's what I would do is I would think about where your feet are planted, keeping them lined up with your hips. 
Um, and then also, it's also, I find really helpful to keep your knee stacked above your ankle. So if your ankle is further forward, that now you're using too much pressure to keep okay. it down. But if your knee is right above your ankle, the weight of your leg can do more work to keep the high hat down. Okay. So those are, those are things I like to think about is alignment and, and where your, your weight is balanced. Um, and that's, that's something that I, I find it really helpful to take videos of myself and to practice in front of a mirror because I like to be able to see those things and, and make those connections because it's pain isn't bad. Pain is a tool. Pain, it shows us um, where something hurts, where it's out of alignment, where we're working too hard or, um, but yeah, that's, did, did any, that answer your question? Yeah. Do you have any follow-ups to that? No, thank you. That's, that's great. I mean, I'll check that. I'm looking at it where I'm just sitting here. I have that same throne that you have also. Oh yeah. I just got just recently bought it so that it could because of the issue, but um, I'll check and see if, how my pedals are lined up too. Cause yeah. I have a feeling that might have something to do with it. So what so, I do, mm, go ahead. What I have to do is I, when I'm setting up my drum set, I'll, I'll just put my seat down and I'll just get comfy and where my feet end up that's uh -huh. where I put my pedals. So instead okay. of moving my body to the drums and like trying to figure out where to put it, I use my body to place the drums. I sit in okay. the center of where I feel balanced in my chair. And then I, and then I put my pedals where my feet are. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, Appreciate it. We can piggyback onto that because I, this, I, I don't know if you guys knew, but I used to be a personal trainer back <laughs> in the day before I got sick. And another thing that I used to tell my patients uh, or my clients that used to have knee issues is you have to make sure that your toe points the same direction as your kneecap. So exactly. the same thing that what Heather was saying is your knee is pointing a certain direction, but then you you look at the angle of your feet and your toes actually pointing in, but your knee is pointing this way, you're gonna have a lot of, of issues with your knee. So whatever direction your kneecap is pointing, your toes need to be pointing in that same direction just so that you don't do damage over time and that kind of thing and cause pain that doesn't need to be there. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. Can you all hear me? Yes, hey. go right ahead. Okay. So when I get to a gig, I get my stool, throne, drum throne, set it up. And then I take the bass drum and put it where it needs to be. And then I get my snare and get it situated. And then my hi-hats so that my feet are aligned then I set up everything else around it. Instead yep. of just going in and setting things and you don't even know where your drum throne is. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing I do is sit and then I get situated. Totally. That's exactly yeah. the way it should be done. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I do it too. I, I get comfortable, I sit. And it might look weird if you're setting up, like you'll watch a drummer take out all their stuff. I take out my throne and I sit down and I just kind of sit there and I, cause that's where you're stationed for the night too. You know, that's like, right. this is your place on the stage, you know? So make sure it feels good. Make sure your elbow is not running into the wall, you know? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. And don't let them push you into a corner. If there's enough room. Okay. This is something drummers are constantly being shoved into the tiniest, but can you get a little closer to the wall? Take up space, especially as a woman, especially in an industry where we're up, like underrepresented, like, take up space, you know, don't, don't let them push you yeah. into a corner. It, advocate for yourself. Like you don't absolutely you don't right. make yourself small. Right. Absolutely. Right. Um, does anybody else have anything before we say goodbye? No? Yeah, it's Jen. I just wanted to say, Heather, you just, uh, you're so talented and thank you for everything. Um, I admire you too, for the fact that you're an amazing singing drummer too. Um, and I'm an aspiring singing drummer. And then the, the lesson that you put out on five steps to singing drumming yeah. is amazing. So <laughs> I've been practicing it for like the last probably three months and I'm so much better than the train wreck that I was before. So thank you so <laughs> much for that. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so glad yeah. to hear that, that, that it's actually helping people. Um, I, I'm, I'm so grateful for all of that. I'll, I'll toss that one in the, in the link as well. Um, the, uh, t five tips for singing and drumming. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. Really awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it was cool that the collection of lessons I got to do with Drumio are actually kind of diverse. Like I have the drumming and singing, I've got writing fills and then I've got a simple practice. Oh, and also in Drumio Edge have a series of videos that's just pocket videos where I'm literally playing a beat for half an hour and you just get to play along with me. 
Um, so those are really valuable too. Yeah, Dremio oh. is probably, it's really great money to spend. It's yeah. definitely worth it. Yeah, it's it's worth it. Penny, it's cheap for what it is in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, the value that they provide is, is so high. It's, it's really great. Absolutely. Um, Heather, if you yeah. will hang on after everybody leaves, I want to mm -hmm. get your um, info so I can send you a, a, a Drummer Girls United shirt. Yeah, sure. If you'd like one. Okay. Um, but if everybody is finished um, with your questions, <clears throat> sorry, my voice just decided to leave. <clears throat> if everybody's finished, I want to just say thank you so much for joining us today. Um, it's going to be so much fun. And I've got so many uh, celebrity artists that want to be part of this. I might have to start doing two a week. Can you believe? So um, I'm really, really excited about that. I'm already booked um, into March. And so I'm going to start stacking people. I think I just heard back from Sarah Tomek. Um, she, if you don't know who she is, she's a fantastic drummer. She um, last year was on tour with Steven Tyler. And so, um, so anyway, she's going to be on, I think in February, we've got Dorothea, I think is next week. And um, Emmanuel Kaplet is now on this schedule. We've got lots and lots of cool people I'm so excited about. So um, you guys continue to join us. I'll continue to add things to the um, monthly calendar. And then next month we'll come up with a new um, contest as well. So if you guys have ideas for a contest for next month, I'm very open um, to suggestions. So just let me know and um, I'll be happy to pull that together for you. <laughs> Sorry, my voice. I think it's probably going to be gone by the end of the day. Okay, so you guys, thank you so much for being part of DGU. Please continue to Thanks, invite Sammy. People. Thanks for having us. Thank You're you. You're so welcome. Yeah. We Thanks will see each other next week. Me. Next week is Dorothea, so don't 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 um, don't miss it if you can be part of it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank okay. you. See you guys later. Bye. Thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.